Are you ready to live your dream? Motivation, inspiration, and passion. That's what it takes to make dreams come true. Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Our guests will share important tips, insights, and knowledge to help you fulfill your dreams of success. Here's your host, actress, author, entrepreneur, Nadia Sahari. Hello, hello, hello. This is Nadia Sahari with the Nadia Sahari Show. Oh, yes, here I am, and here's my wonderful guest today. She's beautiful, she's smart, she's talented. And before we start, let me tell you that we all are dreamers. You already know that. The whole world is a dream. The whole whole world is filled with dreamers. We all want to be writing a book. We want to be in a movie. We want a record label. We want to be in business. We want to be rich. We want to make a lot of money. That's what we want. And you know what? That's why I have the guests that I have. So my show is about motivation, inspiration, and education. That's why I have them share their secrets, their journey, and their challenges. How do they do it? How do they maintain it? What is going on in their lives? I have a guest today. She is an author, and she has a chronic illness. And we're going to talk about that today. She wrote a book about it. She has a YouTube video about it, which we're going to share with you. It is so heartwarming and so, I I can't explain it. You'll have to watch it because you're going to experience feelings like you've never felt. And I watch it. It's incredible. The whole thing is incredible. We're going to find out how she did it. And without further ado, I want to introduce to you my friend, Lisa Snyderman, welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so happy to be here, Nadia. Thank you. I know that you are a voice over talent, and you have many other talents. Let's talk about those. What do you do? I know you do a lot of stuff. (laughs) Go ahead. Tell us. I I wear a lot of hats. Um, I'm a playwright. I'm an author, as you mentioned. I, uh, I write and create fantasy musicals on audiobooks that I adapt to stage plays. I uh, f- make films. I do all kinds of things creatively that help me along my journey. Wow, that is amazing. I thought I wore a lot of hats. You do wear a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you should hear my hats. Oh, boy. You should hear the hats or see the hats or whatever. <laughs> but there's a lot of them. Yes, yes, yes. But you know what? That is the best thing to do. We need a purpose in life, and we might have more than one purpose, and that's okay, because we might want to give up one purpose, but we still have nine others. <laughs> yeah, the way I look at it sometimes is I say that everything I do is art. It just takes different forms. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, so when did all this happen? At what age did you begin and what did you do in the beginning? What was the first thing that you did at a young age? So I have been creative as far back as I can remember. And my mm. very first memories as a kid would be singing, mm-hmm. acting in community theater, school plays, musicals, dancing, you know, doing art. And then a little bit later, as an adult, I actually started and discovered my muse and started songwriting after a transition in my life. Mm -hmm. And I learned guitar and ukulele. And then as I was noting through my illness, once I could no longer do some of those things, I started writing musicals that I recorded on audiobooks and adapted into plays. Wow. Wow. You're amazing. You are a true <laughs> artist. You really are. It's it's a great thing. So for me, creativity started out as expression and, yeah. you know, continues to be expression. But what I also discovered is that when I started sharing, it is a different kind of healing that happens. Yes. That when you share, when you share your story, for example, it's an opening for others to start sharing theirs. Yes. So you became an author, and what was the reason that you did that? What was it? And your book, give us the title. I know it, but I want you to tell us. Absolutely. So 
When in 2016, when I had been living with my illness for more than eight years, it hit me that I hadn't really processed. As I was just saying, all of these great places to be songwriting and writing musicals, I uh, focus on fantasy and a lot of bright, light, happy things. Well, that's great. It always, you know, is, is very helpful to be creative, but that also wasn't allowing me to process my illness. So I wasn't able to feel those loss of independence from my journey. I was hospitalized in 2010 uh, for all, complete muscle weakness. And then I had to go through rehab to relearn to walk, to stand, to sit, and eventually to play and sing again. And so through that whole process, I was kind of hiding behind my artist persona. And along the way, in 2016, I was starting to realize that creating and donning my artist hat, my name is Aidi, and that is the muse in Greek mythology, mm -hmm. that that didn't take me far enough. But I had a yearning to be something bigger and a need to give back and a desire to write and share my story. You know, I wanted to share my reflections and confessions and insights and my life lessons to help and inspire others who might be going through something similar. Yes, and I know there are people out there, and this is why I have this show, because there's always someone going through the same thing, and they don't know what to do or how to do it, and when they hear someone else has it or does it or is doing it, it's a great way to motivate and inspire someone and to keep give them hope it's like everything else on this earth whatever we go through whether it's abuse whether it's divorce death whatever when you speak to someone who's been through it it's more comforting than thinking that you're doing this all alone absolutely right yes. and also that uh, that seeing somebody who has maybe something similar and continues to pursue their dreams because yes. that's very important. I never let my dreams die. They just changed, you know, yes. I, when I could no longer because of what I was saying, I, so I have an illness, it's called dermatomyositis. It's a rare progressive muscle weakness disease that if untreated attacks and weakens my immune system and my muscles. And I have been dealing with the challenges of managing this trying to find the right combination of treatments and drugs and therapies since about 2008. So by dealing with this and, you know, being able to uh, share and have something to go towards, like you're talking about hope and following dreams and finding purpose. Yes. Well, when this happened to me, things changed in my life when I could no longer uh, publicly tour or have the stamina for performances. I needed to find ways to keep my songwriter dreams alive. And then I discovered that I could write from home and license my music. And then I started writing musicals and finding that I had an interest in a niche in connecting with young adults. You know, so all of this on my journey wouldn't have happened, you know, if, if yes. I had not had the illness and had to persevere through that. Yes. And are the treatments, uh, it sounds like the treatments, you're being successful because here we are eight years later and you're strong and you're doing what you want to do and maybe in a different way, but you're doing it. And I admire you for doing that, Lisa. I really do. Thank you. So I will say uh, chronic illness is a journey. So I have the ups and the downs on the roller coaster, as does everybody. Uh, and right, I had a flare, actually, of my illness last October. So I've been homebound for about a year. And I am still finding ways to creatively contribute, you know, find purpose uh, and have an identity outside of you know, being sick. Yes. And I think that's very important, especially for people who are homebound, not to only, you know, deal with isolation. There's a lot of things that come with that when you're not in the world yes. and you still want to contribute, you know, you're, you're still an artist at your core. Hmm. So it's important. Yeah. You know, what's interesting as you're speaking and what you're saying about this chronic illness, you know, we all have a chronic illness in some way. It might not be, it, it could be our bodies, it could be our minds, it could be a relationship, it could be anything, a marriage, it could be anything that keeps us isolated. 
and keeps us from being who we are and doing what we want to do in life. A lot of us have that chronic illness, but it's in a different way. It's in a different diagnosis. I think what what I'm hearing is is that we all have something that we deal with. And sometimes it's life challenges and difficulties and hardships. Yes. And other times it's right. It's, it could be illness. Other times it's caring for a loved one. Yes. Um, there's all these things that we have in common, I think, yes. that we can benefit from, you know, by thinking about all the ways that we can continue to thrive while we go through these, mm-hmm. these um, you know, difficulties in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we do. And we all have something in our lives that kind of cages us up and keeps us from doing what we want to do and from going out there and being who we are. It could be another person doing it or a situation doing it, a relationship. It could be anything. It could be so many things, but we all have something and, and we all have to treat it. We all have to face it and deal with it and do the best we can. And that's what you're doing. You're doing everything that you can do. I think in a lot of ways you're successful and uh, and you're here. You're here. And so just keep doing it and keep <laughs> don't give up because I don't think you're a giver upper. I think you're no. keep on going <laughs> passionate and and I love that about you and I'm here for you. So we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about your book. So don't go away, Lisa. Get locked in to the Nadia Sahari Show and achieve your dreams today. Listen in at the NadiaSahariShow.com. Listen to some amazing people just like you find their way in life with great uplifting stories, problems they dealt with, and get to understand what makes them tick. It's the Nadia Sahari Show. Great interviews, touching feelings. Whatever talk you need, you're sure to find it right here at the Nadia Sahari Show. Grab it, do it, love it, and get excited today. And we're back with Lisa Snyderman, voiceover talent, songwriter, author, plays. I mean, she's everything. She does everything. And Lisa, let's talk about your book. My book is called A Light in the Darkness, Transcending Chronic Illness Through the Power of Art and Attitude. And what it is, it's it's an inspirational story of the healing power of music and creativity following your dreams and finding your true purpose. What I did is I basically share my journey of plunging into and through the darkness. And it spans 10 years that I battle and make peace with my illness, dermatomyositis, while I'm obsessively creating to heal. And I share reflections and confessions and my life lessons to inspire hope and the courage to keep dreaming and living life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. I always say, you know, no matter what life hurls at you, meaning we all, as we were talking about, have experiences. And the only thing we can do is choose how we act or react. You know, we can't control what life hurls at us. Yes, that's true. And your book is beautiful. And you've made a video called Keep Shining Music Video which is so touching. Oh my goodness. I I could not believe it. This video is incredible. So tell me, did you write the lyrics to this song? Yeah. So let me explain a little bit of the the background. Please do. When I found that it was harder to get out of the house, I was saying I'm homebound. One of the things I wanted to do after I wrote my story is figure out how I wanted to share it with the world. So I ended up collaborating with 45 to 50 artists from around the world who also create to heal to share their stories and art through a project that I did a video series and also a live event. And I called this lights in the darkness conversations on creating to heal. And it was a lovely, wonderful way to learn about others journeys, but also try to uh, understand how I might be able to put all of this into an anthem. I was trying to uh, create a song for the live event that would capture all of our stories. So I imagined what that might feel like for artists who are going through something and then feel those um, insecurities and doubts and still have to, you know, get up and perform or, you know, 
put their art pieces out into the mm -hmm. world, if they're visual artists, whatever it is, they persevere after a transformative life event. Yeah. And so I wrote this song called Keep Shining, where the vocal, especially in the choruses, continues to get louder and louder and louder. And the, the chorus is, keep shining, oh beautiful one, the world needs your light. And while the verse was you know, expressing insecurities and doubts and fears and anxieties and what ifs, it's as if the chorus keeps getting louder and louder and drowning out those negative inner voices. So I wanted to create something. You know, I wrote the song first back in 2018, and then I recorded it earlier this year with my producer. And I asked for contributions from 20 or more artists from this Lights in the Darkness group, and they all gave me vocal. So they create the choruses. And then I ended up thinking about how I wanted to make a video. And honestly, Nadia, I really didn't know that this was my story until I started putting, you know, connecting the dots. So yes. I wrote the song for somebody else thinking I'm capturing all our moments. And then I realized this is my story. Is that so right? That's, that's I'm not... serious. Oh my goodness. Serious. So, you know, I'm thinking about what images, what do I want to do for this video? And it hit me that this is my story. I need to share how, you know, I was in the hospital and I had these in my own insecurities and doubts and fears about not being the same person when I performed again because I didn't have the core strength, right? I didn't have the confidence perhaps because I wasn't the same person anymore before my illness took away so much from me. And so that video you're watching is sharing my story and struggle with my illness and disability, but also recovery. That's the important part. It's uplifting because it shares going through these hard moments, but then it also, you know, details these beautiful things like my husband trying to help and, you know, us outside, him helping me walk, him helping me, you know, get back to the place where I want to play on the stage again. And then it shows at the end, I'm on the stage. And then at the very end, I'm, I'm actually playing at a hospital for children. Oh. And so the whole thing hmm. is almost comes full circle of, you know, we have to go through these things. And even after, there's still hope, right? Keep shining. It means yeah. you need to share what's inside you. You need to shine your light, even if you're you're not the same person that you used to be. The world needs your light. Yes. And that character in your video looks like you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's myself, the avatar, myself, my husband, and even my dog makes an appearance, our wire <laughs> fox terrier, Alice. I love oh, that. Oh, that is so cool. I love <laughs> it. I love it. That yeah, is so wonderful. I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. And I'm, I love what you've done. And I love your book. And I'm still reading your book. I just love what you're doing. I love the positive attitude that you have. I love the inspiration, the passion. You're you're amazing. You are an incredible human being. That's that's very kind and I, I'm very appreciative and grateful. I, I was sharing this with you before we started and I'll share now that one of the most re reaffirming or affirming things is that when I share my story it becomes an opening for others to share theirs. So I really had a, an honor just recently. Uh, my memoir, I adapted to an audiobook, And I had uh, just been considered for the Grammy Awards for the audiobook as well as the video. And what was the most special part about this process is that it was such a connecting experience with others mm -hmm. that it was a catalyst for others to share their stories or even, you know, their family stories with me. And I didn't expect that. It, you know, if somebody says, oh, my mom has MS or my sister has lupus. And, you know, they'll write a paragraph about what's what's happening and why that had meaning to them. So I realized that it's difficult for me to be vulnerable. This is a hard place to be because, as I said, I've hidden behind being AED, the muse. And all I have to do is share my music or my musicals and nobody has to know my journey. Right. Yes. It's private. going from that to how rewarding this is when I'm me and being able to share who I am and then have somebody else feel, you know, enabled to be yes. them.
and yes. share their, their gifts. Well, you know, you have a pleasant voice too. <laughs> I yeah. don't care what tone you use. It's, you have a pleasant sounding voice and I love it. It's a perfect voice for voiceover. And you know, I could even see you doing voiceover in children's cartoons <laughs> <laughs> because you. you have that great sparky voice i love it well yes you you are incredible you are incredible were there any people in your life who influenced you in any way to do the things that you do or to be who you are if you think back who would that be absolutely as early as i can think back my parents because they showed me that whoever I was was enough from the beginning and that I could do anything and be anything that I wanted to be. So that gave me a lot of confidence to try things early on in my life. And they also encouraged arts in every form. So, you know, I, I've always been a risk taker, even though right now my body doesn't want, you know, to uh, assume those risks, but yes. I've always been a risk taker in so many ways. And, and I, I always say I feel most comfortable out of my comfort zone <laughs> because in other words, I've never written a script, for example, and I had never collaborated with a bunch of people on, you know, a, a musical audio book, but I did it and I learned as I went, you know, along. And yes. so I just, I love learning and growing as an artist and as a person. So I would definitely attribute to my parents as you know, the initial people who are in my life. Yeah. That's, uh, that is beautiful. And it's wonderful that you had parents that did that and supported you and encouraged you. Yeah, I, I feel very blessed about that. They're still supporting and loving and encouraging. Yeah, they, um, my mom was just here. And she bought my book to give oh. to some of her friends. She wouldn't let you know, she didn't ask me for it. She bought it. And that was very, very respectful and kind. Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, is there anything that I forgot to ask or I neglected that you would like to share with us? I would love to give your viewers just some tips maybe on staying creatively inspired. Because I know that a lot of us go through these slumps and these might just be, you know, ways if you're not already doing it that can spark that inspiration again. So a couple of tips might be to unplug. That's first. <laughs> Get off the computer and take a walk. It can be in nature. It can be in town. It doesn't really matter. But to me, when you're walking, excuse me, when you're walking or I you know, not on the computer for one, you really are uh, absorbing and able to restore in a different way. Uh, for me, I have a regular place to be creative or write, and I try to make a habit and a practice of showing up. So I could put that on the calendar with carved out time. And it's just a reminder. And it's, it's a little bit of a structure that says, I'm just going to show up and let what happened happens happen. Uh, Sometimes it's going on an adventure, changing your physical environment, maybe taking a small trip somewhere that can spark that inspiration and also play. So without editing, without judging, that might be drawing or doodling or collaging. It might be singing. It might just something that sparks that joy for you is really helpful without being the editor and the judger and trying something new. So if you like to cook, uh, maybe it's a new recipe. Or if you like to cook and you haven't tried gardening, maybe it's gardening. You know, trying to do something new so that you have a different experience that, that brings that inspiration. And then the last thing I would say is, is keeping a journal. I always have an ideas notebook, you know, so that I can just jot stuff down, brainstorm. And again, not editing, just putting it out there so that maybe that's something later that I can return to. That is such great advice. I love what you said. So you've done all that. And I agree with you because I'm in that stage also where we forget how beautiful it is outside. We forget to smell the flowers like they say. It's cliche, but we forget to smell the flowers. We forget to talk to people because we're busy with the computer we can't even associate with human beings anymore because we don't know how, because we stopped, because we let the computer get in our way. 
And we really need that human touch, listening to the other human being and being there for them. Absolutely. And the other one, if people aren't already doing, is either starting or maintaining a gratitude list. Yes. It's such an important and easy practice. You know, any time yes. that something is going awry or differently than I plan, it's not that I won't acknowledge my feelings. I definitely have, to, you know, days where I don't want to get out of bed or my fatigue is so debilitating yes. and I acknowledge it. Yes. But I also will ex extend that and be grateful. My dog is right there, you know, licking my, my legs or the sun is shining so that it can happen at the same time and yeah. that I'm not denying what I'm feeling but I'm acknowledging that both can exist at the same time. So, you know, perhaps, you know, a gratitude list might be helpful as well. Yes. Or a, a, even a gratitude journal, just separate yes. from, yes, absolutely. Yes. I love it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you should see how many notebooks I have. Oh boy. I'm a notebook uh, freak. I cannot <laughs> go to a store. If there's notebooks in front of me, any kind of notebook, I have to buy a notebook and I must have a hundred or so waiting for me to write into. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you asked if there was something that you, that I wanted to talk about. And the last thing I'll note is that for anybody who might be uh, dealing with chronic illness, I am creating a virtual summit next year and I'm interviewing more than 50 expert speakers to ask them what their strategies and resources and practices and tips are for thriving with illness. And I think that's really going to be useful for people. It's going to span anything from alternative medicine, spiritual teachers and healers, medical professionals, artists who battle illness, online networks, thought leaders. Uh, it, it just all kinds of creative therapists, art, drama, and music people. And I'm taking from everybody to share these gifts from people on how to help them thrive. You are amazing. You are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to be fine. I just know it. Look at <laughs> Suzanne Summers who had cancer. I mean, she did everything she could to treat herself, to get rid of it. And look at her. How many years later, she's doing great. She looks amazing. Yeah. So much also is mindset and mindfulness. And, you know, that's, I think it's so important that, you know, we actually listen to our own bodies and also have the mindset to remember that we are not our illness. That's right. That is not you. That right. is, that's right. That is not you. That is just something that you have, but you yep. can get rid of it. And it's not you. You were not born with it. You're going to get rid of it. I know that you're going to get rid of it because I can tell you right now, if you remain and do the treatments and if you remain positive the way you are and do not let anyone make you sad or stress you <laughs> or you cannot you cannot do any of that. You need to remain happy, purposeful, meaningful, do what you're doing, do your art, enjoy what you're doing. I believe that you're going to overcome this whole thing and you just change that thought pattern in that brain. And like you said, it's not who you are. And that brain, you just tell that brain, I am whole, I am healthy, I am Lisa Snyderman. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and just believe and have faith, really believe you will be healed completely. I really do. Thank you, Nadia. You're yeah. welcome. I mean it. I'm not just saying this because I have a radio show. I speak <laughs> from my heart. I really do. I don't say oh, I anything. Can feel, yes. I can feel it. I, I, yes. I, uh, I truly yes. appreciate, you know, your well wishes. And yes. I, I believe you. I believe you. Yes. I, I'm a very altruistic person <laughs> 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 to my detriment sometimes. <laughs> but uh, But thank you so much for sharing your heart with us tell the audience how they can connect with you how they can buy your book how they can see your video everything please absolutely well i am on social media a lot and my two channels that are best to reach me would be facebook and twitter 
And my Facebook is AED Muse Music, A-O-E-D-E-M-U-S-E Music. And Twitter is AED Muse, A-O-E-D-E-M-U-S-E. And then for the book, you can find it at a light in the darkness.info. That's a light in the darkness.info, as well as Amazon and other uh, you know distribution. The audiobook is on Audible as well. I think you're wonderful, and I thank you for sharing your story with us. And I will have you back again because you're going to be here next year and the year after and the year after. Thank you so much, and keep shining your light. I want to thank my guest, Lisa Snyderman. Thank you, Lisa, so much for being on my show. What a light you are. You're a light to all of us. Keep shining because you are so bright. You are bright in many, many ways. We learn so much from everyone. I've learned so much from Lisa. Be positive no matter what happens in life. And arrange your life so that your purpose is what you want. You might have to change the way you do things, but you can still live your dreams. So I want to ask you, are you living your dreams? Thanks for tuning in with Nadia and her guests. For more info, episodes, and connection, please visit our website, thenadiasahareshow.com. Share episodes with your friends. Follow us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Instagram, and most importantly, never give up. Live your dream. Latin Connection Magazine is a family magazine featuring people of influence, cultural events, and traditions. Recipes and photos of Latin food, Hispanics and business. Plus, get news on Latin festivals, Latin entertainment, and Latinos in the fashion industry. And see photos of Latinos in action all over the U.S. Conoce tu vecino y mucho más. We invite you to share your special event with us at latinconnectionmag.com. Latin Connection Magazine. Conexión Latina y mucho más. Latin Connection Magazine. It's for anyone and everyone to enjoy, no matter who you are. Thank you.